Hello everybody, I'm Felipe Caro and today I'm going to talk a little bit about research I've been doing related to fast fashion companies. Let me begin describing the context. Fast fashion it has become well known rather recently thanks to companies like Zara and H&M. However, it's been around for a while. In fact, it's fair to say that it is kind of a spin-off from the quick response movement which was a movement that started here in the United States in the late 80s in the textile manufacturing industry. And the purpose of the movement was to reduce the design and production lead times. Originally, it was in the order of one year. And Quick Response succeeded in reducing those lead times into just a few months. And typically, a successful implementation of quick response is based on the effective use of information technologies and the availability of uh, reactive capacity. Fast fashion has taken quick response to a higher level and has shortened even more the lead times uh, from months now into just a few weeks. And the interesting fact has been that these extremely short lead times has allowed fast fashion companies to design and introduce new products during the selling season. So basically, they can revise the product assortment as the season goes by. We call this the dynamic assortment ability, and I, become, I became interested in this uh, topic during my PhD, and in fact, my dissertation was about developing a mathematical model to support the decisions that a fast fashion retailer faces each period. So now, since they have this ability to introduce products as the season goes by, each week, let's say, you have to decide which products you're going to put on the shelves of the store. Now, what's the trade-off? Well, you introduce products because, of course, you want to make maybe an immediate profit by selling them, but also by introducing products, you can learn about demand. And that might allow you to design better products that will provide more revenues in the future. So you have this tension between exploiting right now or exploring to make more profits in the future. The model I developed, of course, was a theoretical model, and it, we derived some interesting properties and once I, was, uh, once I graduated, I was interested in learning whether this model would be useful for a real fast fashion retailer. And I managed to establish a contact with a person at Zara. In fact, uh, I just found an email address in a database. And I sent uh, this person, his name is Jose Antonio Ramos, I sent him the material of my thesis. And I was not expecting him to respond. It turned out that a few weeks later, he wrote back and showed a lot of interest. And in fact, they invited me and my advisor, Jeremy Gallion, who is a professor at MIT, uh, to go over to Spain and give a presentation on my research. It was the first time we had face-to-face -face contact with the people at Zara. And even though they were not familiar with the math, they saw the potential of these mathematical models. We started to have conversations on having a project together Originally, the idea was to implement the dynamic assortment model that I had developed in my thesis, but we realized that they had more immediate needs in terms of deciding the product, the inventory allocation. So think of somebody giving you the assortment decision. So they tell you what you're going to put in the stores in each week. And then you have to decide how many units you allocate of inventory, how much inventory you allocate to each one of the stores across the whole network. Of course, taking into account how much is available at the warehouse and what's available at the stores and hopefully using uh, past sales information. So this was a new problem and we always like new problems so we started working on that and it became to be an interesting problem different from what was available in the literature because we wanted to incorporate a few uh, features, in particular uh, policies that they implement at the store level that somehow affect the inventory decisions. And once we had developed the model, 
there was a, an intern student who went over to Spain and spent six months there. His name is Juan Correa, and he coded the model. He linked everything with the databases that they have and started to do experiments with, the, with historical data mostly. And the experiments uh, showed very promising results, but of course we wanted to use it you know, in, in reality, in real time. The people at Zara were a little bit reluctant. It was kind of risky. At the end, we agreed on testing the model with a small set of products. And what we did, what we did was a controlled experiment. So uh, at that time, Zara had only two warehouses, one in La Coruña, another one in Zaragoza. And we implemented the model only in, at the warehouse in La Coruña. And we used it to allocate the inventory for this reduced set of references. And we had a control group at that warehouse. And we used the other warehouse to basically estimate the, to have an error estimation of the methodology. This is pretty much a standard procedure in statistics, and which has this kind of experiment, uh, I'm not aware of taking place in the operations literature. And the results were very interesting. Uh, we can show that using the model, the sales increased by about three to four percent with, uh, I believe it's a very conservative estimate. And we can also show that, for instance, stockouts are reduced and also the items spend more time on display. And we can also show that the number of transshipments among stores is reduced. So once they saw these, uh, these results, the people at Zara thought this is very uh, useful. And a large scale, a full scale implementation took place at the beginning of 2007. And it ended, I would say, around June 2007. So now I can proudly say that every item at a Zara store has been shipped using our model. There's a paper out there. Uh, if you want to know more, it's available on my website. And if you read it, make sure that you check the acknowledgments because there was a lot of people involved in this project, so they deserve a lot of credit as well. Now, uh, currently, we continue to collaborate. They, since we established a common language, um, they were interested in working in other projects. And in fact, they suggested working on developing a model to support the markdown decisions during clearance sales. Zara has a policy of avoiding markdowns during the selling season. They have a little bit of promotions, but not very much. However, once the season is over, they want to get rid of everything that, that didn't sell. And for that, of course, they use markdowns. And right now, those decisions are made just based on experience. And now we've been working, I would say, for three months and developing a new model. And hopefully, we'll be able to do an experiment as we did in the previous project.